You know, I have a uh, book that I'd like to sell. It was uh, Harry Wright's baseball scorebook from 1876. Okay. Harry Wright was one of the innovators in baseball, uh, organized, managed, and played center field for Red Sox. Pretty much the first professional baseball team. 1876, it was the Red Stockings. Red Stockings, true. <laughs> I bought this from a book dealer in the mid-1960s. I'm hoping to get $5,000 for it. It would be very cool if it was actually signed by Harry Wright, that he was the one of the people that kept scores. Uh, that would certainly increase the value. Dad, you, you've heard of these teams, right? You probably played on one. Watch it. <laughs> and there's one team called the Clintons at Clinton. And this one is from 1878. Beautiful handwriting. Baseball's evolved over the years. We wouldn't recognize baseball from the 1870s, 1880s. Yeah, the game basically evolved from cricket and eventually just took it over. And the rules changed a lot. It really wasn't until like the late 1890s that they got the rules down that we, we, right. we know today. Baseball in the 19th century had some really weird rules. In some games, the first team to get 21 runs won the game. And sometimes you were walked after nine balls not four. They were really still figuring out the game. I'm intrigued by it. I mean, just the fact that it's so early in baseball. How much do you want for it? Well, I'm thinking in the $5,000 range. You, you know, th there's a possibility there. I know one sold at auction for a little more than $5,000, and it was edition two. But this is a first edition. Do you mind if I have someone look at it? I need to find out if that $5,000 figure is based on if someone special on the book, or these are just really, really rare. Got it. Harry Wright. Harry Wright. You've got to be kidding, man. This guy is one of baseball's first true pioneers. Not only is he one of the first players on the first ever team, but he was the first manager also. He helped design the baseball uniform, engineer the box scoring system. So hardly anybody else in the history of the game had as much impact as this guy did. If Harry Wright not only owned this book, but actually signed it as well, it would be the earliest example I've ever seen and belongs in the Hall of Fame. Now, at this time, it was the manager of the team's responsibility to keep track of all the scores. You know, every hit, every base runner, every pitch, every out was all kept track in books just like this. Is it a Harry Wright book? Well, we'll know for sure because on all of Harry Wright's books I've seen, he signed it as a scorer. Okay. Yeah, right here on the bottom, there's a section. We have score. Now, on this page right here, it's blank as well as this one. On this one, we do have a scorer, Arlo. It's kind of tough to read, but it's definitely not Harry Wright's signature there. OK. Looks like right here we jump four years later. We have 1882. We have another scorer down here. OK. A lot of scorecards are here filled out, which is what collectors do want to see. But nothing signed by Harry Wright. Didn't see Harry Wright in here, unfortunately. OK. What this is, basically, it was used by a minor league club or an affiliate to keep track of games over the course of maybe four seasons. OK. That Does mean, it have a value? Anything old with baseball is always going to have a value. But without the content of Harry Wright's autographs, things such as that, you're looking at maybe 500 bucks, 1,000. OK. I thought it might be worth a little bit more even as a first edition, but... Uh... I mean, collectors and historians still would absolutely love a chance to own this. It's just not tied to a professional team or a professional player for that fact. Okay, I understand. All right. Well, thanks a lot, man. You got it, Rick. <laughs> Crap. I, I really was hoping that it belonged to Harry Wright, but I think it still has a lot of value. I guess I can forget about buying my fiance a $5,000 piece of jewelry today, then. Um, yeah. Um... <laughs> I mean, do you still want to sell it? Once I still want to sell it. How about four hundred? Mm, how about eight? How about four hundred? How about eight? Realistically, I could give you five hundred bucks for it. it. It's sort of specialized. You know what I mean? I got to get an uber baseball fan who likes really early stuff to like it. So, can you do any better than five? Can you do six? No, I can do five. I think 500 bucks is more than a fair price. Okay. All right, got a deal. Having to settle for $500 is a little disappointing, but more money in my pocket than I had when I got here. Wow, this thing is nice. This is a casting out. 
This is like one of the holy grails of American coins. I'll do 95 and that's it. No, I don't think so. I think I'm gonna take it home.